Well, good morning, world. I'm happy to be here, sitting here at uh, at IMC in Redwood City, and I appreciate those of you saying where you are. So Deb in Philadelphia, and James and Vita in Berkeley, and Eric, San Francisco, Elaine, Glendale, Barbara in Berkeley too, um, and Rohana in Nevada, and Eric in Cambridge, and William in Michigan, and Megan in Santa Cruz, and, and Jill in Canada, Edmonton, Gary in Seattle, and Catherine in San Francisco, nice to see you here, and LH in Iran, and it's very nice to see you again, hear your name, Jenny, Selinus, Victor, Netalan, and Nuala, and Joan, it goes on and on, I'm so happy, and Karen in Bra Bainbridge Island, Nancy, I think in Redwood City, Lori in New Hampshire, Victor. Well, thank you so much. And um, maybe someone could say if you're hearing this, that would be nice. Yeah, thank you for telling me the sound is clear. I, I've, I really appreciate just a little exchange with all of you and or some of you. It's very nice to feel there's a bit of back and forth going on here. Thank you. So, good morning, and uh, here we are, delighted to be with you, and, and good evening to those where it's evening, and good afternoon, and good night, and um, here we are. And I want to offer a couple of kind of images for this uh, meditation, and one is uh, goes along with the theme of these dharmets having to do with samadhi. Maybe I'll talk about it later. But the Buddha talked about um, that if the mind is too, has too much inertia, that it's just too complacent, too lackadaisical, that it's like holding a bird very loose in your hands and it flies away. Maybe the bird is injured and you're trying to take care of it. And then, uh, if um, if you hold the if your mind if you you hold the bird too t the bird too tight, like you would hold the mind too tight or grip it too hard or something, then you would injure or maybe even kill the bird. And the the idea is to hold the mind, hold yourself, with a kind of gentleness, and but also kind of gentleness, care, carefulness but also with a little bit of intentionality or a little bit of being enclosed so the bird doesn't fly away and get hurt. So um, so this kind of in-between, and I, uh, whether a little bit, you know, may funny, the image of a bird, but the, um, 
the idea of just holding the mind. Uh, so the steadiness, the focus, the one-pointedness, the engagement with practice isn't so much like in this, in this uh, Im- image, from top down, from the control tower down, but it's more like you come from underneath and you hold it, you hold it gently, but you hold it, you know, with some kind of, I don't know if firmness is the right word, but determination, like here I'm going to be. And, and for me, the image of the holding the bird is one of compassion and care and gentleness. And, um, and uh, so the holding, settling. And then the other image or idea is, uh, came from, a little bit from my early years of practice when I had a lot of physical pain in my practice. And it was very hard to get through a sitting because of all the pain. And I had two things that I would uh, kind of tell myself to get through it or be with it when it was really intense. Uh, Sometimes I would just say, moment by moment, just this moment, that's all. Just Just be present for this moment. And sometimes just being present for the moment, just as it is, uh, would get me through to the end of the sitting. But the other one that I did was I would tell myself, uh, say to myself, what if, what if this is forever? And that also would somehow, if it was forever, then this was it. And so for me, at least in my mind, that was a little bit enough to kind of have enough acceptance, enough, some kind of relaxation, just okay. I would give up my struggle, I would give up my future thinking, this is going to be forever, or my planning mind, and navigating, negotiating, debating, bargaining with the pain. Just okay there. So I hope that none of you will be sitting in pain, but you know, it's likely that a few of you will. Uh, And I hope that uh, you can hold yourself and hold your experience with a kind of focus and attention that uh, is like holding something caringly. Uh, Keep placing it in the palms of your awareness, your experience, your breathing. And perhaps this idea that um, it's gonna be like this forever. Maybe for some of you, that will just kind of let you, uh, kind of give away the idea of time, give away the idea of navigating and negotiating time and just kind of being in your experience now. Maybe this idea of forever helps you be in the kind of more in the timeless moment of now. So, if you could now take a meditation posture and and begin with your eyes closed maybe And is there some equivalent for you, some sense or feeling, image you have, that's the same or equivalent to just holding yourself, uh, holding your experience uh, in the palms of your awareness, the palms of your soft hands. That all of who you are will rest in this awareness, in this presence. And perhaps to take a few long, deep breaths, and as you exhale, to settle into the palms of your of awareness. Settle into this, as if you're here to settle in forever. Or here to settle in outside of time. And then letting your breathing return to normal. And if you go through your body a bit to relax some of the holdings and tensions in your body, as you release them and relax, maybe you can a little bit imagine that you're relaxing into the palms of awareness or the soft palm of the present moment that will hold you caringly. And 
then bring your attention to that part of your body where you experience your breathing or the place, the, the way of being, which is the home for your awareness as you meditate. And perhaps you can have a sense of your awareness or your breathing supported or held by awareness, by attention. That you're not in the control tower staring down at the breathing. but like a loving caregiver who holds your hand or the caring palms of the hand cup together to receive something tenderly, but with some firmness, allow the breathing, experience a breathing to soften and relax, ease up into the palms of awareness. And if anything occurs that takes you away from your breathing, you might say to yourself, or say to it, this too, this too you will hold in awareness. This too you will allow to be held or to be included in the palms of your hand, palms of awareness perhaps making those palms of awareness larger and larger so it can hold all things and especially the breathing at the center of it.
the direction that meditation goes is towards a harmony with all things. The ending of conflict with anything and all, everything. But to sit here with whatever arises in the present moment and hold it in awareness so there's no conflict. Everything rests in the palm of awareness. Everything can be included. This too. This too can be included in the rhythm of breathing in and breathing out.
And then as we come to the end of this sitting, I'd like to evoke again this thought experiment. What if this is forever? And in particular, one area where I really like this question is if the this of what if this is forever refers to our care, our love, our compassion. What if our care for ourselves, our care for others, our care for the world is forever? What if our compassion and love is forever. So may it be that forever that we bring forth our care, our kindness, our appreciation of other people and of ourselves so that we can be carriers of harmony, of goodness, of support, of safety to all beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. So, to continue the theme of this week, which is samadhi, and um, it's a little bit funny to speak after meditating and being somewhat still. So, so that theme is concentration or samadhi. And um, the word samadhi is a, more or less a noun. And it comes related to two verbs or the, the verb. Uh, one is um, samahada. Samahada. My Pali pronunciation is not so good, but we'll, and then um, uh, samahita is another one. And these two words that are more the activity that samadhi speaks to is, um, uh, it has the meaning of uh, placing something together, uh, bringing together, uh, unifying, gath- gathering together. And, um, and so this idea that samadhi is not this laser focus of the mind, but it's a gathering together, uh, bringing together. Uh, and I like the, the word compose. Everything gets composed. All of who we are gets composed together, ends up coming into harmony, into a kind of unity. One of the words uh, related to samadhi is ikodi, uh, and um, uh, it's sometimes translated by the by Bhikkhu Bodhi as unified, and by an, another monk, Tanisara Bhikkhu, as as a unity. And this idea of unification, of bringing into harmony, um, is a very different feeling uh, for samadhi than the idea that it's a kind of a laser focus of the mind. 
in the dictionary definition of samadhi, then my dictionary of concentration, it has two meanings. And one meaning is uh, the, um, the action or power of focusing one's attention or mental effort. The action or power of um, focusing one's attention. But the other meaning is a close gathering of people or things, the action of gathering together closely. And both those meanings are related to what samadhi means in, in, uh, in the Buddhist tradition. And, um, it, and so one of the ways that this comes together, this idea, is that we're building on the idea of settling the mind or settling our experience, settling into our experience. So rather than this laser focus so much, it's uh, everything settles in to the bottom, like the bowl with all the marbles, that um, the, the marbles settle into the bottom of the bowl and sit there and be, very, be at rest. So there's a settling, a gathering together of all the desperate parts of who we are. It's very easy to end up living a life that's fragmented and uh, to have, uh, uh, so for example, if, uh, if I tripped this morning and so- somehow injured my foot in, in the dark, I could, uh, part of my body sitting here could, in theory, um, still kind of feeling that mild trauma of the trip, of the fall, of the fear. Part, another part of me might sitting here just feeling delighted to be together with all of you this way and sharing the Dharma with you. My mind might be thinking about what's for lunch and wondering what I could find in the refrigerator. And, uh, and then I might be with a conversation I had yesterday and maybe the challenges or the delights of that conversation. And, and then I'm wondering about this and that. And the mind kind of emotionally, physically, Intention, and then my inten- intention is to try to be focused on my breathing or something. So there's all these different things that are going on at once, and or almost at once, kind of swimming around, bouncing around, and um, and often the mind is fragmented, divided, um, agitated, spinning around, and um, and so the um, the the process of samadhi is this settling and gathering together. So all the desperate parts of ourselves are no longer fragmented, but uh, are gathered together and and work together. So that our attention, our intention, our physicality of our body, the physical sensations of our body, our emotional uh, body, our emotional experience, our cognitive experience, the thoughts we might be having, all of it is gathered together for the same purpose in meditation. So for example, if we're concentrating on breathing, all these different parts of us are coming together, being gathered together to hold the experience of breathing or to be together with the experience of breathing, to be in harmony, just gathering together. Now, you don't have to work too hard at this. Uh, It helps maybe enough just to say that we're trying to overcome any sense of conflict with anything when we meditate. So there's nothing which is considered wrong or something to be gotten rid of, just something else to be held in. in You too, come here, come here, let me hold you, let me include you here. Not including like like thoughts that we're going to keep thinking, but just a thinking mind is relaxes and settles. Oh, it's here, it's okay, be here. When I was, um, when my son was quite young, my older son, he went to a preschool, so he was probably three years old at the time, and um, with really marvelous uh, teachers, and they were kind of my heroes, and the goodness they brought to the children was just so, like one of the best things going, and you know, I feel like these, these are the people who are creating the foundations for a wonderful society. And they were really kind and generous and wise, and but there was one thing that uh, I really loved to watch when uh, sometimes I'd go into the classroom. These three, four-year-old kids were running around like crazy, yelling and screaming, doing what three-year-olds do and playing. And when it was time for something different to happen, uh, one of the teachers would stand in the middle of the classroom, stand tall, and just begin to whisper. 
and uh, not try to cr- stop the kids from playing or you know anything. Just stand there and start whispering. And the kids who are nearby would notice and they would come and sit next in, in front of the teacher. And then the other kids, slowly the whole class would hear the whispering and they'd all gather together and sit around the teacher and then the teacher would sit down and tell a story. It's possible the kids knew that that's what was coming, was a story. But, but this idea of, uh, of not forcing the kids to be quiet, forcing them to stop what they're doing and come back, uh, but rather to harmonize, to gather together in this kind of peaceful way. And, and everything gets settled. The whole classroom got settled and quiet. Um, or it's a little bit like when I was, um, also when I was in elementary school, I remember having a little red magnet, a U-shaped magnet, and I would pull it across the sand in the sandbox. And there were little kind of flint, metallic iron flint particles in the um, in the sand, and if I'd go back and forth in a straight line, the little flint pieces, little iron pieces, would line themselves up in a, in a kind of a line, kind of. And this idea of coming to the breathing and let the breathing maybe be the whispering, breathing be the magnet, and everything begins to settle there. Everything gathers together. So coming together, settling together, holding together, so what I talked about um, the, um, earlier in this week about uh, settling the mind and centering the mind, as the, as the attention gets centered, as the attention gets, um, gets um, um, uh, steadied and settled, and then it becomes kind of the gathering place, the magnet, the support if we don't kind of keep giving our energy of our mind to distractions and to other things in the wrong way. So this gathering together, this settling together, this unification, this harmony. The, the consequence of that uh, for the Buddha is that uh, we become peaceful. <clears throat> that, the, that the direction that samadhi takes us is peace. And one of that <clears throat> sense of peace <clears throat> is a, a sense of lack of conflict. And uh, so if you find yourself in conflict with anything, anything at all when you're meditating, you might want to see if there's some other perspective to which to hold it. <clears throat> maybe this can be forever and just hold it and include it. And, or maybe there's a way of being not in conflict with it, but also not caught up in it and involved in it where you make room for it, hold it in the palms of awareness. This too is included. This too, you know, for me, the, this image of the palms holding something, the palms themselves are silent, silent of words and ideas. And so let something be held in the palms of awareness is to allow things to kind of settle into a kind of quiet or stillness. My mind still might be thinking, but I'm not living in the thoughts. I'm not identified with the thoughts or so interested in the thoughts. I'm interested in this holding of everything, this everything coming together, settling in. And to have that happen with something like the breathing, there does become kind of a one-pointedness that happens, but it's kind of like the one-pointedness of everything coming together into that one place, as opposed to uh, forcefulness of the mind. A lot of what meditation, uh, concentration, samadhi has to do is letting go, relaxation. And, um, and so this movement like of yesterday of uh, applying oneself and then sustaining attention, it's a little bit like um, coming back to rest and awareness and then stay there for a while. Open, include everything. And so finally, this idea of, um, of um, this too, instead of having conflict with anything, this too in some way should be included. This too is held in awareness. This too is brought together into this harmonizing, this um, 
gathering together, this being coming composed, uh, unified into the present moment. So samadhi as the unification of mind. So um, just keep, you know, sh- you know, always, as I've said before in earlier weeks, uh, most of the time we're beginners. So keep coming back, letting go, center yourself over and over again on your experience. Once you can do that a little bit, then you can uh, really get into this idea of connecting and sustaining attention. And as that continues, just over and over again, connecting and sustaining, and the sustaining becomes longer and longer, uh, then it naturally begins to be like a magnet and pulls everything else together. Things settle and let go and come together. And so over time with samadhi, then you'll experience more and more of this really being here and settled. And, um, and one, one word for this kind of unification of mind that maybe is more meaningful for some of you is um, calm, the calming of the mind. Everything becomes calm. So, um, thank you. And uh, the Buddha said that uh, the support for deepening concentration is happiness. And that'll be the topic for tomorrow. So until then, I want to thank you again. And I hope this idea of unification and this too, including everything, um, is also a way of being in the world where your presence promotes non-conflict in this world and supports everyone else to find some peace and subtleness. May all beings be peaceful. Thank you.